Welcome one, welcome all to another edition of TGPW, the Gorilla Position Wrestling, the most unprofessional professional wrestling in Fire Pro Wrestling. And I am your host, The Swink, and we are coming at you again with another in the Summer Sizzler series. This is episode four. This is titled Big Boy Summer, and we are kicking things off with one of the final, the penultimate, TGPW Tag Team Title Tournament first round matches as by the end of the night we will have all of the first round matches in the Tag Team Title Tournament completed. We'll be ready to move on to the quarterfinals which will begin at our next event Hasta la Vista Bebe. But right here we've got one of our final first round matchups. It is the Briscoes Dim Boys, Mock and Jay Briscoe Take it on the team of the Motor City Machine Guns, Alex Shelley and Chris Sabin. Also, uh, later on in the show, we will see the final first round match. It is going to be the Road Warriors, Road Warrior Hawk and Road Warrior Animal, taking on the Faces of Fear, Ming and the Barbarian. Those two matches, plus four more matches coming your way on this show. We, of course, have the main event which is Go Shiyazaki taking on Variant Kiji Muto. More on that later. Plus, we'll have the Big Boy Battle Royale featuring eight big boys going at it to determine who is going to have their best big boy summer. Plus, we have Hook making his debut representing Team Taz. He's going to be taking on the macho son, Jason Powell, representing the Detroit Wrestling Connection. And a, a six-man tag team matchup as Hit Row make their debut. Isaiah Swerve Scott Ashante, the Adonis. And Top Dalla is able to be taking on the team of Drip by Snoo Snoo, the team of Marty Drip Drip, and Camille and Jade Cargill. Those are all the matches are coming your way, but right there we just see Mark Briscoe with some redneck kung fu. And now he goes for the cover and gets uh, just a one count. As referee Bill Alfonso again. Bill Alfonso is our referee for the next 60 days. As referee two count Lou Tafato is serving his 60 day suspension following his actions at our June event, My Own Summer. We talked about that in detail at our last event, Blood Red, White, and Blue, which of course is available on the YouTube channel that you're watching right now. And there is the ACCS rush right there by the Motor City Machine Guns. Again, uh, Blood Red, White, and Blue, if you haven't watched that show yet, go watch that before you and watch this video. Then come back and watch this video. All the TGPW events are available in one big playlist, so if you haven't watched any of them, watch the playlist, get caught up, then come back here and watch this. Again, like, comment, subscribe, share. Do all those things on the channel. Make sure you hit that bell icon down there on the video to get notifications when the new TGPW videos go up. There's a cover and a one count. Now that we've got all those plugs out of the way, super kick by Alex Shelley and a tag is made to Chris Sabin. Chris Sabin and Alex Shelley, the Motor City Machine Guns, one of the most decorated tag teams in the last, uh, I would say, two decades now. Two of the most influential tag teams here in the Briscoes and the Motor City Machine Guns. These two teams have wrestled each other on eight separate occasions in the past. And the Briscoes have got the better of them in seven out of those eight matches. Briscoes seven and one. Cross arm iconoclasm off the ropes by Mark. Goes for a cover, gets a one, gets two, and only two as Chris Saban kicks out. Leaping in, Zaguri stuns him, but a back elbow stuns Saban. As Saban is sent to the eternal turnbuckle. And now these two are going at it chops and forearms. Who's going to get the better of it? Saban does as he tags in his partner Shelly. Big power bomb by Mark as he tags in Jay. Nice Uranagi right there by Mark. As Chris Saban is now the legal man, and there it is again. 
the ASCS rush. I believe Saban is the legal man. Yes, he is as Marcus tagged back in. Dem boys now going to work on Chris in the corner. There's a little virus party right there by Mark Briscoe. Shoulder tackle, but a counter by Saban as he blocks it. Blocks the shoulder tackle. Nice counter into the DDT by Saban. And he hits a leaping in Ziguri. And now a sitting super kick right there. Caught Mark right on the jaw. The tag is made to Shelley. Mark sends him into the buckle. Has him up. Slams him down. Goes to the top. There it is. The froggy bow. But Alex Shelley gets out of the way. He saw that coming. Mark Briscoe's finisher. The froggy bow. Shelley avoiding the contact there. Again, these two teams have wrestled each other so many times now. They know each other's moves. Saban with a running Liger bomb. Center of the ring. Has him pinned. Got two, but Jay is there to save his brother and this matchup. As the Briscoes were nearly eliminated in the first round of the TGPW Tag Team Title Tournament. Again, both of these tag teams, great tag teams, influential tag teams in the last 20 years in professional wrestling. Almost. As Mark and Jay have been wrestling on the independent circuit since the early 2000s have been brothers longer than that. But the Briscoes have been around. They've wrestled in both Ring of Honor and NWA TNA. They've been to Japan. Wrestling for both Pro Wrestling Noah and New Japan Pro Wrestling. They are record holding Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champions. No one has held the titles longer, not longer, but no one has held the titles more than the Briscoes. In fact, one of the last title reigns for the Briscoes, they defeated the Motor City Machine Guns to win those belts. As the Motor City Machine Guns, a decorated tag team in both TNA slash Impact Wrestling and in Ring of Honor. There again, the cross iconoclasm out of the corner by Mark. And a little wreck neck kung fu for you. Chris Sabin with a series of kicks. But Mark fighting back. Hits the elbows off the ropes. Leaping drop kick by Mark Briscoe. The chicken farmer out of Delaware. Taking it to Chris Sabin. There's the shell shock by Alex Shelley. And he sends Mark into the buckle, comes charging in and hits the, the Shining Wizard in the corner. But Mark is right by his corner and wisely makes a tag to his brother Jay. Jay is stunned, but Mark hits the Uranagi. Who's Anagi? Uranagi. And now Jay, the former Ring of Honor World Champion, going to work on Alex Shelley. Standing switch reversal. There's the octopus hold, but Jay is there to grab the rope and force a break. DET by Saban on Jay. Back suplex by Mark on Shelley. Shelley tags out to Saban. Double team on the way. There it is again. The ASCS rush. Series of European uppercuts by Jay. Jay and Saban knock heads. Saban, the longest. I wouldn't say the longest rating, but the man with the most X Division title reigns in there, Chris Saban. No one's held the title more times than Chris Saban in Impact slash TNA history. Drop toe hold by Shelly. He goes for a cover. Gets two and... Oh, 2.9. I think Mark had to kick out. I don't think Jay was th got there in time to break it up. I think Mark had to kick out on his own power backdrop driver by Say on to Shelly. Shelly back to his feet. Takes a forearm, gets whipped into the corner, and now he's set up on the top rope. And again, 
The cross arm iconoclasm out of the corner. Goes for Froggy. Bow again and gets it this time. Can he cover him? No. He does not go for the cover. I don't understand the logic behind that one. He Irish whips him into his own corner and then tags out to his brother. I think Mark could have had him beat there. I don't know why he didn't go for the cover. Said brother Jay is in there now. And these guys have left it all on the line here. And what an opening matchup we're seeing here between two great tag teams. There's a roll up and that is gonna be it. As Saban hits the shell shock. Sorry, the cradle shock on Mark Briscoe. Motor City Machine Guns win it and they advance to the tournament over the Briscoes. On to match number two here at Big Boy Summer is a matchup between two up and coming young wrestlers. As Jason Powell, who TGPW fans should know as a member of the Detroit Wrestling Connection, takes on the debuting hook of Team Taz of AEW. At our last event, we saw two up-and-coming wrestlers compete in Dominic Mysterio and Thunder Horse. Thunder Horse coming away with the victory there. Here we've got another two young up-and-comers and Hook and Jason Powell going at it. There's a figure four by Powell as he tries to go for an early submission win over Hook. Hook with a hip toss. There's a Bulldog by Powell. There's a Hangman's Neckbreaker by Hook. Goes for a suplex, but Hook reverses. Suplexes Powell all the way out of the ring to the floor. <laughs> Hook just stares him down. Hook has him up, Fireman's carry into the slam with the heavy rain. Hook is fired up here tonight. See, he's taking it to Powell right now. Hook, a former lacrosse player in college. DeFore decided to become a professional wrestler following in the footsteps of his father, of course, the human suplex machine, Taz. And becoming a member of Team Taz. Look at that gut wrench suplex there by Hook. Can we call that a gut wrench hookplex? There's another heavy rain by Hook. But Powell catches him with a bulldog. Irish whip reversal by Powell. Goes for a double axe, but no, misses. And there's a combination of punches. All by the big one. Shades of his illegitimate father, the Macho Ghost. Macho Man Randy Savage, and there's the Macho Elbow. Got the elevation, but couldn't connect. Roll up by Cook, gets a two count. Off the missed elbow drop from the top by Powell. Powell with a hooking clothesline, takes down Hook. How about that, a hooking clothesline and Hook. Misses the back elbow attack, does Powell. Brings him back towards the center. Just punches him right in the back of the neck. And it's a neck breaker. Nothing fancy there. And another neck breaker by Hook. Hook off the ropes. Hits the body attack. There's a jawbreaker by Powell. Follows it up with a knee drop. And another. 
the crowd getting into this one as these guys are evenly matched going back and forth here in this matchup Hook sends him into the turnbuckle but Powell fights out slams Hook's face into the turnbuckle Powell comes charging in but runs into the buckle as Hook is able to avoid double underhook suplex by Powell as he drops the knee Drop kick to the knee by Hook. Hook with another gut wrench suplex. That deadlift gut wrench suplex by Hook. Hookplex, if you will. Powell sent into the buckle. Hook follows him in. Maybe looking for a suplex, but no. Powell suplexes Hook out of the ring. It's a receipt from earlier in the match where Hook did the same to him. Pump handle slam on the floor by Hook. As these guys are going at it on the floor. Pile driver by Powell on the floor on Hook. He may have broken his damn neck. Hook's got to get back in. He does. He avoids the 20 count. There's a rake to the eyes by Powell, but Hook again with the heavy rain. Powell is on Dream Street right now, but Powell fights back with a back elbow, but it's caught with another lifting suplex by Hook. Powell to the top. Drops the flying elbow, but misses as Hook again able to avoid the elbow. There's a deadlift hookplex as Jason sends him out of the ring and decides to taunt. Fouls hook to the outside. And again, they're fighting on the outside. And they're both back in at about 12. There's a gut wrench suplex of his own by Powell. Powell to the top. Flying double axe handle. Shades of the Macho Man. It's the son of the Macho Man against the son of Taz. And there's another double axe handle from the top by Powell. And another knee drop. What more is it going to take? Went for maybe a pile driver, but countered by Hook. Hook goes behind, but gets caught with a bulldog by Powell. You can see the effects that this match is having on both of these guys. As Powell is breathing heavy now. He's going up, looking for that elbow again, maybe? No. Goes for the axe handle, gets it. Hook has him up. It's another heavy rain. Powell may be thinking for the elbow. Thought better of it, though. Neckbreaker by Hook. Hook gets caught again with a bulldog by Powell. Powell to the top. Nope. Thinks better of it. I think he thought he was too far away. Dead lift hook plex. Two and three. He got him. Hook picks up the win in his debut over Jason Powell with that deadlift German hookplex. We are on to match number three. It is our final match in the first round of the TGPW Tag Team Title Tournament. And as, is it, as it is the Road Warriors, Road Warrior Hawk, Road Warrior Animal, taking on the Faces of Fear, Ming and the Barbarian. Back in our first match, we saw the Motor City Machine Guns defeat the Briscoes to advance in the tournament. One of these two teams will be the last team to advance out of the first round into the quarterfinals. And we'll be all set with the quarterfinals that will begin at our next event, Hasta La Vista, baby.
I talked about it earlier, the Briscoes and Motorson Machine Guns fighting each other in the past. The, the Briscoes getting the better of the Motor City Machine Guns in eight of those seven mat or eight of those matches. Sorry, seven of those eight matches. But on this evening, the Motor City Machine Guns finally pick up a win over the Briscoes. These two teams have fought each other only twice in the past. And the Road Warriors defeated the Faces of Fear both times. They wrestled each other on an episode of WCW Monday Nitro and an episode of WCW Saturday Night. Yes, the Road Warriors were on Nitro. In the early days of Nitro, this was probably the early, early 1996, the Road Warriors were in WCW together as a team before returning to the World Wrestling Federation as the Legion of Doom. It was during their brief stay in WCW that they had two matches with the Faces of Fear, Ming and the Barbarian, and they defeated him both times on Nitro and on Saturday night. Well, that's the only two times that these two teams have wrestled each other. Spine Buster Slam with a cover by Animal. Gets a two count before Barbarian is there. There's a bear hug by Ming. Now we saw Ming earlier in TGPW at another Summer Sizzler event, at our first Summer Sizzler series number one event. Who Ate Your Cereal? Where he competed in an eight-man tag team match as part of the Dungeon of Doom. And of course, the Faces of Fear are members of the Dungeon of Doom. So you know they want to please the Taskmaster tonight by winning this match and advancing in the tournament. Conspicuous by his absence is the manager of the Faces of Fear, Jimmy Hart. Jimmy Hart is not here tonight, neither is Paul Ellering, so neither manager of these classic tag teams are here. But that doesn't matter right now. What matters is one of these two teams will advance in the tournament and in just a few minutes I will give you an update on the tournament brackets. But right now we've got Brawley on the floor. Remember there's a 20 count on the floor. They got to get back in the ring. They do. Count out is avoided. Ming and Animal are the legal participants in this match. As Hawk makes a tag, there's a spike power bomb by the Road Warriors. Goes for a cover. Does Hawk gets two and no? I think Ming kicks out on his own power there, because I think Barbarian was late getting in there. There's a press slam by Hawk. Hawk's tongue was sticking out while he was doing that. By the way. Road Warriors showing off their power in this match. Barbarian just taking Hawk's head off with a lariat. These are a couple of tag teams that are just a bunch of bruisers. There's a cover on Barbarian and just a one count as he kicks out. How do you hurt these guys, Ming and Barbarian? I mean, what do you gotta do to put them down? Do they even feel pain? That's a question. There's a pile driver by Ant Ant Hawk, rather. As Animal tags in Hawk. And I believe Barbarian is the legal man. Yes. As he gets backdrop suplexed by Hawk.
And there's a pile driver. So the winners of this match will face the Circus of Slime team in the quarterfinals. Running power slam by Animal. Goes for a cover, hooks a leg, but Barbarian breaks it up as he applies a camel clutch. And now a camel clutch from Ming to Animal. There's an elbow and a tag is made to Hawk. Tell him, Hawk. Well. We snack on danger, and we dine on death. There's a splash off the top by Ming. Don't see that very often. Animal suplexes Ming all the way out to the floor as Barbarian's in there now as he sets up Hawk on the top rope. Belly to belly, overhead throw off the top by Barbarian as Ming's got the Tonga death grip on Hawk, Animal on the outside. Bing with a pile driver. A tag is made to the Barbarian. Animal fighting off both men. Gets shot off the ropes with that Irish whip. It's caught coming in with that clothesline. And there's a kick of fear. Rolls them over, goes to the cover, gets to it. Oh! 2.9 kick out. Animal just kicks out the last second out of the kick up here. I thought that was going to be it. Axe handle off the apron by Animal on Barbarian. There's a backbreaker by the Barbarian. Barbarian tags in Ming. Running power slam by Animal on the Barbarian, but Ming is the legal man as Hawk is now tagged in, and he's legal. Inverted atomic drop by Ming. Countered by Hawk into the back suplex. Uh, he's holding him for the lariat by Hawk. Cover gets two and th no. Two point nine kick out by Ming who hits a savat kick. Right to the back of the head of Animal. Hawk with another pile driver just spikes Ming into the canvas. This could be it right here. Road Warriors advance. No! Another 2.9 kick out, says referee Bill Alfonso. Just got the shoulder up, did Ming. Goes for another cover, and he got him this time. Barbarian too late to break up the pin as the Road Warriors win it and advance in the tournament. Five. Match number four here at episode four of Summer Sizzler Series, Big Boy Summer, is a six-person tag team matchup. It is the team of Hit Row making their TGPW debut. Isaiah Swerve Scott, the NXT North American champion. And his partners, Ashante the Adonis and Top Dalla, as they are taking down the team Drip by Snoo Snoo. The team of Marty Drip Drip, Jade Cargill, and Camille. But real quick, let's go over the TGPW Tag Team Title Tournament. First round matches, Thunder Buddies defeating the Foundation. We just saw the Motor City Machine Guns in our opener defeat the Briscoes to advance, so it'll be Thunder Buddies versus Motor City Machine Guns in round number two. Uh, Fish Mox defeating Coco Drip. And they will take on the Young Bucks as they defeated, join them to betray them. That'll be another first, second round matchup, quarterfinal. 
Circus is slime, we talked about that. They defeated Ted DiBiase and Sasha Banks in controversial fashion. Uh, they will take on the winners of our last match, the Road Warriors, who just defeated the Faces of Fear. So that'll be our other quarterfinal matchup. In our final quarterfinal matchup, we'll see the Grills of Destiny. Sorry, we'll see the future hipsters who defeated the Grills of Destiny take on the Hardy Boys who defeated Warhausen, Warhorse, and Danhausen in the first round. So those are all of your quarterfinal matchups, Thunder Buddies versus the Motor City Machine Guns, Fish Mox versus the Young Bucks, Circus of Slime versus Rogue Warriors, Future Hipsters versus the Hardy Boys. And the quarterfinal matchups begin at our big July event, Hasta La Vista Baby, which is coming up next and the TGW event schedule. So keep an eye out for that one. Again, make sure you set up notifications so you get notified when Hasta La Vista baby drops. And you get the continuation of the TGPW Tag Team Title Tournament, the quarterfinals, the first two quarterfinal matchups. Right here, again, we've got a six-man tag. As Hit Row make their debut. Taking on a team that are TGPW regulars. But this is their first time teaming as a trio. Marty Drip Trip, Camille, and Jade Cargill. Camille, the NWA Women's World Champion. Uh, Marty Drip Trip has had his issues with bad old JR Jim Ross. Losing that rivalry. Death by Snoo Snoo competing in a tag team match in which they lost to Fire and Flava that was back at my own summer. Losing that match to Kier Hogan and Tasha Steele. So things have not been going well for Drip by Snoo Snoo, to say the least. Smarty Drip Trip has lost all but one of his matches in TGPW so far. That being a win in an eight man tag team contest with Detroit Wrestling Connection in which he actually scored the pinfall for his team. It was an eight-man tag against the Circus of Slime team, of course, consisting of El Jefe, El Gran Blanco Presentadora, Crooked Tortuga, Michael Brennan, and the Insane Clown Posse, Violent J, and Shaggy Tudo. Again, like I said, Marty scored the pin on that, in that one. So you know he wants a win here in the worst way. So he has yet to win a singles match, yet to win a tag team match as he also lost in tag team match. The team of Coco Drip, Coco Chiwear, and Marty Drip Trip losing to Fish Mox, John Moxley, and Fish Stick Steve Barrett at our last event. But red, white, and blue. Double drop kick there by Jade and Marty. They take it to Top Dalla, but Top Dalla tags out to Swerve. Jade and Swerve going at it here. Nice blow to the back of the head, just clubs him right in the back of the head by Jade. Nothing fancy right there. Straight up power. I think Swerve was looking for a superplex. Jade off the top of the double axe. And just clubs him right in the back of the neck. Step up in Zaguri by Swerve. Forearm smashed by Jade. Swerve drags her back towards his corner. Tags in top Della. The tag is made to Camille. Look at Camille going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Top Dollar here. Top Dollar off the ropes. It's the big splash. That's a lot of weight coming down. Top Dollar, former NFL football player. Turned professional wrestler. Top Dollar with a headbutt off the top. Caught Camille flush, but Camille able to get to her feet first and tag in Marty Drip Drip. Shante D. Adonis tagged in now. 
That's the with two E's, by the way. Shante competing regularly on 205 Live for WWE for forming, uh, I wouldn't say forming, but joining the Hit Row group alongside Isaiah Swerve Scott, Top Dalla, and Be Real. There's a super kick by Marty. He goes up top. Standing moonsault pressed by Marty Drip Drip. Look at him go. He's fired up. He is determined to win this match tonight. He knows. His losing record standing. C4 right there by Marty Drip Drip, also known as the Spanish Fly. The athletic ability on display of Marty Drip Drip. I think it's all that parkour training he's been doing. <laughs> Top dollar, good guy. He tried to murder that woman. I would not want that man, that size, coming off the top rope, landing on me. Forget it. Jade, showing off her strength, just throws the big man, Top Dalla, across the ring. I think Jade's a little pissed off right now. Ooh, Jade and Swerve just clonked heads right there on the nasty collision in the center of the ring as the North American champion is getting pummeled right now, but fighting back with el forearms, elbows, if you will. Set to the buckle as Camille's tagged in. Double suplex by the Amazon women. Camille dragging Top Dalla back towards her corner. Just knees him right in the solar plexus. Slapped him right in the back of the dome. Levels him with a lariat. Top Dalla is taking some punishment right now. Camille showing off why she's the NWA Women's World Champion here. But Top Dalla fights back with a short lariat and a, another headbutt off the top. I think it's a headbutt, not a splash. And I don't know how wise that headbutt is. The headbutt, is, I think, is taking a lot more out of Top Dollar than it's taking out of his opponent. He's ramming his head into his opponent. That can't feel good. There's a tag made to Marty. Marty with a super kick. Look at that agility. Scaled up the ropes. There's the moonlight drive. Hooks the leg. Two and two. Oh! Top Dollar out at 2.9. A shot day was not going to get there in time. A swerve was cut off by the Amazons. The top Dalla showing his resiliency, kicking out a 2.9. I think Marty was going up the top, but he ran right into the top Dalla. Instead, that could have been costly. Ashante and Marty going at it here. Super kick takes him down, but he gets caught in the corner by Top Dalla. Holds him for the drop kick by Ashante. Teamwork on display by Hit Row. Hit Row. <laughs> you gotta say it like that. Oh, man. Ooh, another collision. Ashante up first, hits the elbow drop. Double drop kick by Jade and Marty. Standing switch reversal by Shante gets caught with an elbow. Shante into the corner with a clothesline. Catches Jade. Series of elbows. Drops another elbow. A Jade with a backbreaker and another one. And she holds him up and make it three. And a double bicep pose. Jade showing off her strength right there. She is certainly confident. Top Dallas tag back in. Running power slam by Top Della. And now there's a stretch muffler. Is that gonna be it? Yeah, it is. Marty can't get there in time to break up the submission. 
Jade gives it up as Hit Row are victorious in their TGPW debut in this six man tag. All right, time for the Big Boy Battle Royale, our semi main event of the evening. It is an eight man battle royal. You can be eliminated by pinfall, submission over the top rope. We are starting with two competitors. After the timed interval, another competitor will enter until all eight competitors are in the match. The last one to win will win the Big Boy Battle Royale. As you can see, Earthquake was sent through the middle. He was not over the top, so therefore he was not eliminated. As Earthquake and Tugboat are starting this one off, former tag team partners in the Natural Disasters. It's Tugboat, also known as Typhoon, and here is our next entrant. It's the big man. The big man is back. Ready to back that ass up. It is Rikishi, by God. Rikishi is here. And he immediately slams Earthquake. Earthquake was the winner of our big boy tournament. Our TWS big boy tournament. Outlasting all the other big boys. He is back here. To prove he is still the best big boy. And that this is his big boy summer. Tugboat also competing in that tournament under his other alias, the Shockmaster. We've seen him compete in TGPW as the Shockmaster before as a member of the Alliance to End Steve, but he has since been fired from the Alliance to End Steve due to, quote, his incompetence. So that is why he's back here as fan favorite Tugboat. Here comes Ryota Hama, the big man from Big Japan Pro Wrestling. And look at him taking it to Rikishi. These two guys are very similar in size, stature, and appearance. In fact, you can tell Ryota Hama inspired by Rikishi. He is in the yellow and black. Rikishi in the black and yellow. There's a big double powerbomb by the Natural Disaster showing off their teamwork. Elbow drop and just a one count on Hama. Again, can be eliminated by pinfall submission over the top rope. We've had four competitors so far. No one has been eliminated yet. So far, we've only seen Earthquake go through the middle rope. He is not eliminated. And here comes entrant number five. El Jefe himself, El Gran Blanco Presentadora, leader of Circus of Slime, as he immediately grabs a chair from under the ring before he even gets inside, and it swings wildly. And he just sits on Earthquake. What a toss by Tugboat as he tosses El Jefe. El Jefe holds the chair. Now he's trying to get Tugboat disqualified. Alfonso not falling for it though. There's a cover on Earthquake and just a one count. And another one count. I'm gonna try my best to keep up with the action here. There are five big men here in this match. There's a cover by Hama, gets two count, and here comes Falaba. You've seen Falaba compete here in TGPW before as a member of Super Gimmick Max Beyond Tomorrow in an eight-man tag team contest. He's back here on his own, competing in the Big Boy Tournament. Big Boy Tournament, but the Big Boy Battle Royale. He was also in the Big Boy Tournament, though, the TWS Big Boy Tournament. So he's back here in the Battle Royale. This is the first appearance for Hama, first appearance for Rikishi. Rikishi gets suplexed to the outside. That does not count as an elimination. And here comes Big Daddy V. That is number seven out of eight participants as the ring has filled. This is our first time seeing Big Daddy V and good lord what a suplex. How in the world was Falaba able to suplex Big Daddy V? He is probably the largest man in this match. There's a lot of large men in this match but he might be the biggest. Ooh, what a brain buster by Rikishi on Earthquake. And 
here comes the eighth and final participant. Josie's on a vacation far away. Come around and talk it over. So many things that I wanna say. You know I like my girls a little bit older. And it looks like Earthquake was eliminated. He is the first man eliminated from this matchup. I was too busy singing the outfield as AC Romero made his entrance. But Earthquake, surprisingly, the first man eliminated from this battle royale. And I don't think anyone else has been eliminated. Rikishi driver on Hama. That could be it for Yoda Hama. Is he going to kick out? 2.9 kick out by Hama as he kicks out of the Rikishi driver. It's a headbutt on Rikishi. Eight participants in this match. We've only had one person eliminated so far, and it looks like Hama was just thrown out by Rikishi. As soon as I say we only had one elimination, Rikishi throws Hama over the top rope. But Earthquake was the first one eliminated, surprisingly. Hama thrown out by Rikishi. We are now down to six. Very surprising to see Earthquake, the first man eliminated in this match, but he and Tugbo starting this one. Double suplex by AC and Falabaz, the Impact wrestlers team up. You can see El Jefe sporting some new gear right there, representing his home country of Guatemala with his ring gear. Falaba avoids elimination, and he eliminates Rikishi. Rikishi tries to eliminate Falaba. Falaba eliminates Rikishi, though. Rikishi is gone now, and Falaba gets press slammed by Tugboat. <laughs> FA tells the fans what he thinks of them. Tugboat avoids the elimination. AC's got a chair as Tugboat eliminates Falaba. Falaba nearly eliminated Tugboat, but Tugboat comes back and eliminates Falaba. So we are now down to four. In this big boy battle royale. Gran Blanco just pinned Big Daddy V. Again, you can win by pinfall submission, disqualification, count out. Those all count as eliminations, and we saw him eliminate Big Daddy V by pinfall there. He tries to get AC Romero disqualified. He's got chairs all over the ring. Wait a minute. Oh, Gran Blanco avoids the elimination. Tugboat almost had Gran Blanco gone there. He escapes out the back door. Again, trying to get Tugboat disqualified. But Bill Alfonso not falling for Gran Blanco's Deception. You know, El Jefe of Circus of Slime would like nothing more to win this match. Keep the momentum his team has going. I don't think Romero was eliminated. No, he went through the middle, not the top. Tugboat threw him through the middle rope. As AC came back with a chair. There are chairs all over the ring. Romero almost thrown out over the top there. He managed to avoid elimination. Again, avoids elimination. There's the Mexican stretch. Is that it? In this case, I guess it would be the uh, Guatemalan stretch. There's a low blow by Gran Blanco, but that doesn't surprise me. Shoulder tackle. Takes down AC. Look at him mocking the fans. Gets caught in the bear hug. Is he gonna give it up here? Can he get the submission? No. And Blanco doesn't give it up. Press slam by Tugboat. Tugboat thrown over the top. And we are down 
to El Gran Blanco Presentadora and AC Romero as now we get the three amigos. Sends them all the way out to the floor. Gran Blanco taunting the fans as AC Romero grabs another chair. There are four chairs laying out in the ring. AC Romero almost got Gran Blanco thrown out of the top, over the top there. This match could have been over. Wait a minute. Look at this. Oh, now he's mocking Rikishi, who was already eliminated with the stink face. The fans didn't get to see the stink face from Rikishi. They saw it from Grand Blanco there, and he throws AC Romero over the top, and this piece of garbage wins the match. Ugh. Grand Blanco is your big boy battle royale winner, and I'm disgusted. Circus of Slime continue to win. All right, it is time for our main event of the evening as Summer Sizzler Series Episode 4, Big Boy Summer, concludes with this singles matchup as it's Go Shiyazaki taking on the variant Kiji Muto. So the story behind this one, folks, Go Shiyazaki at My Own Summer winning the spot for a shot elimination six-man match to earn a title shot against TGPW champion Kiji Muto later in the show. Shiyazaki seemingly had the match won when out of nowhere comes another Kiji Muto to interfere on behalf of Kiji Muto. The two Kiji Mutos attacking Shiyazaki, seemingly costing Shiyazaki the match with the older, the TGPW champion Kiji Muto. Therefore, there were some post-match comments backstage made by Shiyazaki in a YouTube video that you can find here on the channel. Shiyazaki making the challenge to the other Kijimuto, the variant Kijimuto as we're calling him, the younger Kijimuto in the red trunks here, to a singles matchup one-on-one -on -one at this event. And Big Boy Summer challenge was made it was accepted on behalf of the Mutos so it's Shiyazaki and Kiji Muto but this is not the last we'll see of Shiyazaki and the TGBW champion Kiji Muto as Shiyazaki no doubt will want another title match feeling that he was cheated in the last one calling Muto a coward saying that he had the match won if it not for the other Muto interfering the variant Muto also interesting thing to note during that backstage interview, the post-match comments from Shiyazaki, he was interrupted by Myron Reed, who was also in the spot for a shot match. Myron Reed had a pinfall on Shiyazaki that was unseen by the referee. As two count Lou was distracted, did not see the count, did not see the cover, so did not count. Shiyazaki shoulders down. Myron Reed claiming that he had Shiyazaki beat in that match. Said it wasn't over between the two of them and that he would have his eye on him. Then leaving the interview area. So, more on that story as it develops. But right here, Shiyazaki taking on the variant Muto. And he is definitely angry after what happened looking to take his anger and frustration out on this other Muto. And he is chopping away at the chest of Variant Muto and just chopped him right in the back of the head. Just battering this Variant Muto, the younger Kiji Muto. Hurricane Rana, shoulders down, center of the ring, just a one count. Suplex on Shiyazaki by Muto. Muto drops the elbow, the power drive elbow by Kiji Muto. Signature offense from the former IWGP World Heavyweight Champion. Muto, a member of the Three Musketeers in New Japan Pro Wrestling, alongside Masahiro Chono and the late, great Shinya Hashimoto. He is wrestling a man that claims that he is pro wrestling Noah. I'm talking about Go Shiyazaki. 
Again, catching him with a Rana. Gets two count only, though. Drop kick to the knee. Goes after the arm and now has an arm bar applied. Shiazaki escapes. Elbow by Muto. Chopped by Shiazaki. Drag and screw leg whip by Muto. Muto, I think, was looking for a figure four, but Shiazaki able to counter. Chops him right in the chest and another chop. Chops and elbows exchanged here. Shiazaki with a chop sends him down by the drop kick by Muto. Variant Muto. Shiazaki going at it here. Nice Pele kick by Muto. But Shiazaki comes back and hits him with a chop. And another series of chops. That chest of Muto has to be turning bright red. Has to be turning into hamburger meat from all the chops that he's taken. Power bomb stacks him up, Jackknife pin and gets him. Shiazaki emphatically wins the main event here at Summer Sizzler Series, Big Boy Summer. So Go Shiazaki gets a measure of revenge over the Mutos as he defeats variant Kiji Muto by pinfall with a jumping power bomb in 13 set minutes. Double leg hook fall as he wins the main event of TGPW Big Boy Summer in this special challenge match made by Shiazaki. This grudge match as he it's a measure of revenge over the younger Muto. And that is going to wrap things up for this evening's event. Make sure to come back for our next event. TGPW presents Hasta La Vista, baby. Well, the TGPW Tag Team title tournament will continue with two big quarterfinal matchups there. Plus more on the story as it develops between Go Shiazaki and Muto, as this is far from over between these two. But keep in mind, Arrow Boy is still the number one contender to the TGPW Championship as he won the number one contenders match over Kenny Omega at my own summer so he has a title shot guaranteed does arrow boy but shiozaki wants another title match against muto he got the win here against the other kiji moto and we know the older kiji muto the tgpw champion kiji muto was watching on from the back from the locker room he no doubt saw what happened to his younger self. In the older Muto, he saw what was going on in the shot for a spot tournament. He saw all of the potential challengers, all of his younger opponents, potential opponents, and felt threatened by them. Felt that he could feel his TGW championship. Could be slipping away from him so he decided to employ someone that he could trust to help him keep his title and the only person that he knew he could trust was well himself so he somehow was able to acquire the services of his younger self by some means he was able to another version of himself from the timeline either an alternate timeline or somewhere in the multiverse or even going back in the past somehow I don't know the means of which Muto was able to acquire him but he was able to acquire a younger version of himself 
but the younger Muto here failing in his bid to defeat Shiyazaki here tonight. So that is going to do it for this show. Stay tuned for our next event, Hasta La Vista, baby. I am your host, The Swink, Nick Swinky. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe on the video. Hit that bell icon for notifications. And until next time, take care. And stay what the hell's this? The match is over. The show's over. And now we've got not one, but two, seemingly two great Mudas here. And they are attacking Go Shiyazaki. Double drop kick. And what the hell is going on around here? This is the third show in a row. We've had absolute chaos to end the event. And we saw one Kiji Muto tonight. We talked about the TGPW champion, Kiji Muto. And now we've got two great Mudas, it seems. What is going on? Oh my god, the green mist. And now he's attacking him with a fork. Cut the footage. Let's get out of here. This is disgusting. And it, wait a minute. Here comes the TGPW champion himself, Kiji Muto, to the ring now. As the two Mutas continue to assault Koshizaki. The four-on-one mugging continues, but wait a minute, here comes Shiyazaki's tag team partner and go Big Show, it is the Big Show. And it's now four-on-two here as the Mudos, I guess the Mudo-verse you wanna call them, taking on go Big Show here in a four-on-two situation. It looks like it's Kiji Muto, the young Kiji Muto, the great Muda. And I'm being told that that's bad blood. Another version of Muto. Another variant. And it appears the numbers game may be a little too much for Go Big Show here as they are clearly outnumbered. From the back, here comes hot fire Myron Reed. Myron Reed said he'd be watching closely. He'd be watching Shiyazaki closely. The young goat from Injustice, Myron Reed is here. The sides are now somewhat even as now it's three on four as Myron Reed going after the Mudos. You'd have to wonder you had to wonder whose side he would be on. But here, it seems he's on the side of Shiyazaki and Big Show. As the mayhem continues here. And now here comes the Deathmatch Champion, the TGPW Deathmatch Champion, Arrow Boy. Arrow Boy coming into the ring. He's looking to even the odds. Arrow Boy is here and he has even up the odds here. It is four on four now as it's Shiyazaki, Big Show. Myron Reed and Arrow Boy against the Mudos. Shiyazaki and Arrow Boy suplex Great Muda to the floor. And they are taking it to the Budos here. 